Good morning. So today we're going to be discussing um, conditional statements. Specifically, we're going to be discussing the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. Now, generally speaking, we say if hypothesis, then conclusion. Now, the way we rearrange the hypothesis and conclusion can tell us certain things about a statement. Um, there are three main ways or three standard ways that we can rearrange a statement. First is called the converse. Instead of saying if P then Q, or P is the hypothesis and Q is the conclusion, we say if Q then P. So what if we switch the hypothesis and conclusion and make the conclusion our hypothesis and the hypothesis our conclusion? Okay, that's one way we could rearrange it. Or maybe we say, well, instead of if P, then Q, we say, if not P, then not Q. So, well, what if the hypothesis doesn't happen? Then does the conclusion also not happen? That's the inverse. Now, the contrapositive is kind of like doing both. We say, if not Q, so if not our conclusion, then not P, not our hypothesis. These are the different ways of rearranging a conditional statement. Let's go ahead and do this example we have below here. So it says, if you do all your work, then you'll pass my class or pass the class. Now, remember, if you can think of one counterexample for a question, then you have proved the statement false. Now, I'm going to think of a counterexample for this statement. What if you did all your work wrong? Well, if you did all your work wrong, you're not going to get credit, and so you're going to fail the class. Um, but you did all your work, and then you failed the class. So this original statement must be false. Okay. So far, so good. Now, let's see the converse. Remember, the converse is when you switch your hypothesis and conclusion. So we're just going to go ahead and copy this. Um, if you'll pass the class, control C, then you do all your work. Okay, now if you pass the class, so the only way to pass a class is to have done the work successfully. So if you pass the class, then you must have done all your work. Then you think, okay, well, what is the counterexample of that? I guess the counterexample of that is doing extra credit and being able to pass the class without doing all your work. Or maybe you did most of your work, but you can still pass the class and do most of your work. So there's a counterexample for that one. So that one can be false. Remember, if you've got one counterexample, the whole statement's false. All right, let's think about this if then. If, control C, if you do not do, remember, we inserted a not, then you'll not pass your class. Okay, can we think of a counterexample for that? Probably we can think, well, there are instances where you don't do all your work. Maybe you do most of your work and you still pass. So that could make the first statement true. If you do most of your work, you're not doing all your work. But the second statement false. So again, we can prove this guy false. Um, last is where we do the contrapositive. That's where we put in the knots and we switch them. So if... Control C, you'll not pass the class, then you do not do all your work. Um, I guess again, the counter example if we choose someone who has not passed the class, um, but has done all their work, 
to prove this wrong, we could still talk about someone who did all their work incorrectly. So all these statements are false. That's okay because converse, inverse, and contrapositive are just about rearranging a statement. Let's look at another kind of statement. And we can use this example one uh, to help us with that. Okay, if two parallel lines are crossed by a transversal, then consecutive interior angles are supplementary. I apologize for that interruption. Um, let's go ahead and look at what's happening here, and then we'll get back to uh, the rearrangement. So consecutive interior angles would be like this angle here and this angle here. And the lines being parallel, that would be saying that this line is parallel to this line. Now, if you remember from earlier this week, um, this is the consecutive interior angles theorem. Um, so if these two lines are parallel, then these interior angles are congruent. That is true. Okay, what would the converse of that statement be? Converse, remember, is when we switch the two statements. So we'll have if consecutive interior angles are supplementary, which we'll see. Then two parallel lines are crossed by a transversal. Okay, so let's say these two things added up to 180. Well, if those two things added up to 180, let's say this was 80 degrees and this was 100 degrees. Well, because there's a linear pair happening here with this straight line, I know that this must be 80 degrees. So then I'm dealing with alternate interior angles being congruent. Alternate interior angles are only congruent when the lines are parallel. So this statement is also true. All right, next up, if we include a knot. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy my whole statement and say if two parallel lines are crossed by a transversal, um, two non-parallel lines are crossed by a transversal, then consecutive interior angles are not supplementary. Let's see if I can draw something. So here are two non-parallel lines being cut by a transversal. Is there any way I can arrange this so that my angles here are gonna add up to 180? Over here, it looks like I've got a right angle and an obtuse angle that's way bigger than 180. If I do it this way, I've got an obtuse angle and another right angle can maybe get towards an acute angle, but no matter how I add this up, two obtuse angles, I'm gonna have more than 180 on that side. So you're right, if two non-parallel lines are crossed by a transversal, then the consecutive interior angles are, oops, not supplementary. So this is a true statement. Okay, last one, contrapositive. If, Got to copy this first. Consecutive interior, oh, angles are not supplementary. Then, let's see, two non parallel lines are crossed by a transversal. Um, so if I made sure that two things didn't add up to 180, and then I could also say that they're, those two lines coming off of them are not parallel. This is also true.
Talk about our last example. I need to go ahead and clear off this. Our last example, if two angles form a linear pair, then the two angles are supplementary. Perhaps, all right, let's, we got two angles forming a linear pair. Okay, um, they form a straight line, so I know that they do add up to 180. That's a true statement. If two, okay. Converse of that is where we switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. If two angles are supplementary, then two angles form a linear pair, control C. Well, let's think about that. What if I drew a picture similar to this? Those angles, those two angles are still supplementary. We still have an acute angle, an obtuse angle, and based on how I drew it, they're still adding up to 180. However, they are not linear pair. They're simply supplementary. So this statement is false. Notice that you don't necessarily have to have the same truth value between your statement and its converse. Interesting. All right, let's keep going. If two angles don't form a linear pair, then two angles are not supplementary. Oh, wait a second, these angles don't form a linear pair and they are supplementary. That's a counter example again. This statement is false. Okay, let's do the last one. So if control C two angles are not supplementary, then two angles. do not form a linear pair. Okay, so can I think of two angles that are not supplementary, but still manage to form a linear pair? So that would be like drawing a line and then trying to split that line in some way that they wouldn't form a linear pair, that they wouldn't be supplementary, which is impossible. So if two angles are not supplementary, then they cannot form a linear pair. So this is a true statement. Notice that the original statement and contrapositive will always have the same truth value, but that's not so of all rearrangements. Converse and inverse can have different truth values from the original statement.